tonight's topic on tracking the golden fields of Sapa. And I'm Cheryl. Hello, good evening. Hello. How has your Friday been so far, Mabel? Uh, it's been pretty uneventful. Same as the past few days, just staying <laughs> home, <laughs> trying to occupy my time. What about you, Cheryl? Wow, it has been very hot today. Oh yeah, so I hot. For the past so few hot. days, also really very hot. Yes, it's so hot today that I, I I'm I hardly able to concentrate in front of my computer, honest, honestly. So I didn't really achieve a lot today. I don't know mm. if it's because subconsciously it's Friday, TGIF, <laughs> or I put it, I put all the blame onto the weather. <laughs> I also feel very restless today for some reason. But yeah, I just cannot explain why, you know, just cannot sit still, feel very fidgety and all that. So to our audience out there, you know, how has your Friday been? Is it the same as us? Or are you having a very good Friday? Maybe online partying with everybody else? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> online party i like that yeah. i think a lot of people have been doing doing that uh nowadays yeah, we, right? we have to be very innovative now you know when it comes to social gatherings and all that online social gatherings yes like i have been catching up a lot of like e-lunch or virtual conferencing with my friends bring your own lunch <laughs> and then we we'll just wait for an hour before everybody goes back to their usual work from home routine. <laughs> That's nice. Which reminds me, I have an e-lunch with a friend and we keep forgetting about it. Okay, I need to schedule that for next week. Yeah, don't forget. Don't don't put aeroplanes to your friend again. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> so before Mabel starts the presentation, allow me to introduce Travel Wonder if you are new to us. We are a licensed online and offline travel, uh, travel agency that specialize in active holidays. So if you are interested in cycling, hiking or running vacations, uh, do consider us in the future. Not only that, we are also able to plan um, all sorts of vacations, for example, like romantic getaways, rest and relaxation trips, or even family fun trips. So this do give us a thought in the future. So remember to like, comment and share if you feel that this um, presentation will appeal to your friends. Okay, if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to put them in the comment box. Cheryl will try to answer them during the presentation. If not, we will get back to it at the end of it. All right, Cheryl, I'll take you offline now while I start the presentation proper. Okay, bye-bye. See, See you later. later. Okay, so Cheryl mentioned earlier on about our trips. Let me just go through with you where you'll be able to find all about our active trips. It's on our website at www.travel-wonder.com. Please subscribe to our mailing list if you'd like to receive the latest update from Travel Wonder. We send out our e-newsletter every Friday. You can also find out more about the past trips that we organize. Uh, the trip fit photos and videos, they are available on our social media platform at Travel Wonder SG on Facebook and YouTube. Let's go on an adventure in Sapa. Where is Sapa and how do we get there? Sapa is a small mountain town in Lao Cai province in the north of Vietnam. It's 350 kilometers northwest of Hanoi, and the nearest gateway to get there is via Hanoi, which is the capital of Vietnam. So the recommended flight to fly into Hanoi would be by Singapore Airlines or Silk Air. More on Sapa. Sapa is where the highest mountain of Indochina is, and it's where the Hongyuan Son range of mountain is. So the highest mountain is actually Mount Fansipan, and it stands at 3,143 meters above sea level. Sapa has a total population of 36,000 people, and of this, 85% belongs to the ethnic groups, which have five main groups, which is the Hmong, Dao, Te, Ge, and Xiafe group, scattered in small communes throughout the district. Because of its high location, the average annual temperature in Sapa is about 15 degrees Celsius. May to September is the usual wet season, 
and July and August typically records the highest rainfall over there. To catch beautiful golden views like this, we have to go where the rice turns golden brown just before their harvesting period, which is from September to early October. So this is one of the best time for trekking, even though there may be occasional rainfall here and there. Let me share the daily itinerary with you for our Track the Golden Fields of Sapa trip. On the first day in Hanoi, when you arrive, because the flight is uh, arriving late in the morning, you actually have a good half day to explore around the vicinity of Hanoi city. Our hotel is in the old quarters, so there's plenty of cafes, restaurants, and shops to explore. This is taken during my last trip when I was in Sapa in August last year. So it's a very nice old school coffee place. And I tried their egg coffee. So egg coffee is a must try because it's a local specialty in Hanoi. And how it's prepared is that egg yolks, sugar, condensed milk, and a mixture of Robusta coffee. It's a little sweet for me, but, but because since I'm there, it's something that I must try. Our stay for the night is in the old quarters. It's at this very nice four-star property called the Hanoi Space Hotel. And surrounding the hotel are plenty of cafes, restaurants, bars, and shops. So there's many things you can do. On the second day, we will take a private coach from Hanoi to Sapa. The entire traveling journey will take about six hours with a lunch break in between. En route, you'll be able to see plenty of captivating scenery such as this. And all these photos are taken using my mobile phone. If you are lucky, you'll be able to catch some animal action too. Here in Sapa, they rule the roads, not the vehicles. Every part of Sapa town is picture perfect, with the mountain range at its best, at, as its backdrop. It's a very charming town to spend one or two nights there. As you can see, there's the lake. There's a very nice small little chapel. We will spend a night in the lovely Sapa Horizon Hotel, which is one of the best accommodation in Sapa town. And from the room, you'll be able to catch glimpses of the amazing views surrounding the hotel. So over the next two days on day three and day four, that's where we'll do our trekking through the fields. We'll visit two different tribal villages, understand their way of life, enjoy the digital detox and the beautiful scenery as you trek. So what's to be expected over the next two days? Views like these will be commonly seen. I'm throwing in a few more pictures to give you the real feel of what the, the scenery will be like when you trek. You might be able to spot some buffaloes along the way also if we meet them at the right timing. And we may come across some farmers who are going to or maybe coming back from working the fields with their animals. We will be trekking through different terrains so you do need to wear the proper trekking shoe to ensure that you have a safe and comfortable trek. We will stay in a humble homestay for a one night experience of real village living. So when you're in the village, it's all about authenticity. You know, uh, immersing yourself in the local culture, experiencing how is it like living in simple conditions for one night. You enjoy a spread of local home-cooked meals by the host. So for this trek, uh, there's home-cooked meals on for lunch and dinner on the first day of the trek. And on the second day will be breakfast and lunch. It's a simple meal, but it has lots of variety and cooked with love. So after the two days trek, we will return back to Sapa town where we'll spend a night in this cozy three-star hotel in Sapa which is by the lake and there's a very nice rooftop bar. And this is in time to prepare for our new adventure the next day. 
So our adventure on day five is on a motorbike. Today's an exciting day as we take our motorbikes to explore places where we didn't get to see during our trek. For safety, there will be a local rider, so you will be pillion riding. We will ride up Trom Tom Pass, which is 2,047 meters above sea level, and there will be plenty of beautiful landscapes such as these winding roads of Banho Village, which you will see as you are going up. From the motorbike, you can get to see a wide overview of the scenery around, whereas when you are trekking, it's more of a very hands-on, close experience. So along the way, you see beautiful images like this Lao Kai village. And you can observe the farmers going about their daily work routine as you ride past their farms. From the past, we will make our way to the Love Waterfall, where we'll leave our motorbikes at the entrance and take a short two kilometer walk through the forest along the Golden Stream until we reach the Love Waterfall. From this Love Waterfall, we will visit the Silver Waterfall, which comes with a 300 meter drop. So for this Silver Waterfall, there's actually a 200 step climb, which you can take to go to the middle part of the waterfall to enjoy the scenery around. On the way back, we were right past the beautiful valley of Mung Hong. After our motorbike adventure, we return back to Sapa Horizon Hotel for our last night in Sapa. And on the last day of the trip, we will make our way to the airport right after breakfast. The transfer will arrive at uh, Hanoi Airport at 3 p.m. So for your flights, please arrange it after 5 p.m. You can find out more details on this trip on our website at www.travel-wonder.com under Wonder Collection. Okay, let me bring Cheryl back on screen to see whether there's any questions raised. Thomas, good evening. Thomas, Thomas asks, is the weather cold? Uh, during this season, yes, it will be cooling, but it will not be extremely cold. Roughly, probably an average, uh, what is the temperature like that? About 15 to 20 degrees. At night, it can be a little bit chilly, especially when we you know we are out in the village trekking because there's no heater and it's really out there in the nature. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it, at night, you might drop down to between 10, 10 to 15 degrees thereabout. Mm, okay. Angeline asks, what <clears throat> is the elevation again? Are we expecting any like a uh, tough climb? Uh, no, it's not a tough climb. It's not, Angeline, it's not like what we did for Fancy Pan last year, where it's uh, you no know, elevated climbs all the way. This will be like gentle trekking, just that um, there will be different types of terrains and must be prepared to get muddy and dirty la, in terms of your shoes and all that as we trek through the villages. Yeah, mm -hmm. but there will not be steep, uh, steep ascents along the way. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Priscilla asks, is it suitable for beginners? Oh, yes, yes. But of course, um, you must do some training beforehand in the in terms of like go for regular walks to get yourself used to walking for uh, about 10 to 15 kilometers at least a day. Because this track, um, the first day will be 17 kilometers in duration. So okay. you must be able to endure. But of course, well, when we track, we will take it at a comfortable pace and then we will stop to take photos of the scenery, to observe the way of life. We are not rushing from one point to another. Actually, this trip will be a very good uh, warm up to the Kyrgyzstan trip since now it has been postponed to 2021. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. a little bit of like, if you have never experienced hiking before, this is a bit like a teaser to how mm -hmm. is it like. Yeah, before we go up to 2,000 to 3,000 above <laughs> sea level. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, wait, let me see. Okay, so Yen asks, how long is the trek on third day and the fourth day? Um. Okay, so the third day is 17 kilometers. And then on the fourth day, it's about 12 kilometers. Mm. All right. Yeah, in terms of the length. Uh, yeah. Okay. So um, we see that most of the trip itineraries would include the overnight train from Hanoi to Sapa. 
mm-hmm. yes, so as to save right. a night of accommodation but we didn't yeah. do so why is it mm-hmm. okay a lot of thought is being put into um, the planning of this trip whether to include in the overnight train or not because overnight train will be a very interesting experience to add on uh it's eight hours in duration uh, but okay one of the reasons why we did not include that is from hearing feedbacks given by other uh, people who have tried it before is that the overnight train is a novel idea but it might not be that comfortable and some people have trouble having a good night rest mm. on a moving vehicle yeah so um not only that not only that, it's eight hours in duration. And then when you arrive, the train will arrive into Liao Kai province. From there, you still have to take a bus into Sapa town. And it's an, another hour journey. So in total, it adds up to about nine hours. Uh-huh. So for us, right, uh, the whole point of this, ho- this trip is that it's a leisure track in terms that um, it, we plan it so that you have enough time to explore the different destinations they are in. You don't need to rush from one point to another. Mm. So, you know, when we arrive Hanoi, you have a good half day to explore around the old quarters. The next day, when we go to Sapa, along the way, there's beautiful sceneries. And it's a very comfortable coach that brings us there in just six hours compared to like taking the train and the bus, which total adds up to nine hours. So after all taking all this into consideration, we feel that you know the coach will be a much better and hassle-free kind of arrangement compared to the train. Mm, I think it makes sense because if you take the train and then with that extra hours of transfers here and there, the total travel duration will come up to nine hours and yeah. on a overnight. Whereas if you Correct. take the day coach, mm. it only takes all in all six hours. And, and and I think that along the way into the countryside, definitely there are a lot of sceneries that yes. uh, the group can enjoy. Yeah, yep. that's true. Yeah. Mm. So if you have any questions to ask us or ask Mabel regarding to the trip, please uh, type it in the comments and we will um, answer them one by one. So I have another next question. Okay. <laughs> Angelique asks, does the coach come with Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> it depends. If you are lucky, yes, it will come with a portable Wi-Fi, but we cannot guarantee that. <laughs> Okay. All right. Just a minute. Uh, I'm trying to copy the itinerary link and put it into the comments so that uh, those who are interested can have a look. Okay. Next question. On day mm-hmm. five, there is a motorbike yes. adventure. Yes, that's right. If I have a motorbike license, can uh-huh. I ride the motorbike myself instead of being a pillion rider? Yes, you can, but provided you are a very proficient rider here in Singapore. So no P plate license. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking on behalf of someone else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because um over there, also one thing is um because the road conditions you might not be very familiar. So if you are if you really wish to ride the bike on your own and you're a very confident rider, we will not stop you from doing so. But you must not overtake our motorbike lead at any time. Okay. for safety reasons yeah okay and then if i do not want to ride the motorbike at all mm-hmm. not even as a pillion rider okay and i still be part of that day's excursion to the paddy fields mm, unfortunately no because there's no other alternative uh, vehicle arrangement for that but what you can do because mm-hmm. if you don't wish to uh, participate in the experience is that um, you can take the day off to explore Saba town by foot okay. it's a lovely town lots of nice small little cafes small streets that you can spend a good time walking and exploring around and on our side uh, for this experience that you're not going on you will work into uh, you will look into a small reduction of the trip price for you oh okay good mm-hmm. that's good good to know on the last day, mm-hmm. the transfers to the airport. Ah, um, okay. If I want to extend in Hanoi, yes. can the coach actually drop me off at the hotel in Hanoi first before going to the airport? Okay. Um. Actually, from Sapa, where we are traveling down into Hanoi, we will pass by Hanoi Airport first. So mm. that's the reason why we decided to end the trip in the airport rather than in Hanoi town. So I from see. the airport, um, actually, if you want to make arrangement to go to town, it's not difficult because from the airport, you can always grab the local taxi to bring you there. 
and it's not very expensive also it ranges about 15 to 20 us dollars for about a 40 minutes right depending on the traffic and the but if let's say you're not comfortable with taking the local taxi you can arrange to ask your hotel that you are extending with in hanoi to book you a private transfer to bring you there mm. because we already know roughly that we'll reach at 3 p.m. So you can let them know what's the time you'll be at the airport and you can pick you up. One thing is um, a lot of times people might be wondering whether is it safe or not to take the taxi overseas. For this one, uh, it's not safety is not an issue at all. The only thing is you need to prepare in advance is probably the hotel address. Because uh, don't just tell the taxi driver the hotel name because they might not be very familiar where exactly it's located. So it will help if you prepare the address in advance and you give them the address so they know exactly where to drop you off. Okay. And the address must be written in Vietnamese. Yeah, in their local language. Okay. William asks, is vegetarian meals available throughout the trip? We can arrange, but if once we arrange uh, vegetarian meals, right, it, uh, actually it's for the trek because the other parts of the trip, the meals are not included. So you can actually make arrangements on your own. So during the trek, we can ask requests for vegetarian meals. You'll be cooked vegetables. Uh, the variety may not be as much as the rest who are in the same group as you, you know. But we'll make sure that we are well fed also during the trek. Okay. <laughs> Angeline, Angeline says that Hanoi serves very delicious vegetable fried rice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know that this um trip, or rather most of our programs in mm. northern Vietnam. We are working with um, the first ethnic minority owned not for profit travel partner in Sapa. Yes. So right. how our partnership can help in promoting sustain sustainable and responsible tourism over there? Okay, our partner, the reason why we chose this partner is we are really impressed with the work that they are doing. You know, mm. it's not just for themselves, but also about giving back to the community, especially the community in Sapa. Because um, this company that we work with, our partner is the first and at the moment, the only social enterprise in not only Sapa, but the whole of Vietnam. Oh. Okay, how what they do is um, for all the trips that we book with them or anybody book with them, Part of the profits goes into educating the children of the ethnic right, uh, tribes in Sapa. And they have these uh, hostels that they built to house the students so that they do not need to travel you know, every day from the small village down to town just to receive the education. So for this um, hostel that they built for the students to provide their education, food, lodging and all that, uh, it costs 100 US dollars per month per student. Mm. You know, so all the profits that comes from the trips that they organize, the cafes that they own, the money, part of it will go into supporting these children and their education. And not only that, um, when we go on their tracks, the people that they employ are also from the ethnic tracks themselves in Sapa. So they don't believe in um, employing outsiders. You know, they always believe in giving back to the community. And that allows the community people to want to strive to do even better. And maybe one day they will be able to step out of the, you know, the, the, the village life and do something for the community, giving back to their own community as well. And when they interact with people during the trips, uh, that's where they can brush out on their English uh, language and all. You know, so it, it helps. Uh, it's a very healthy network social system. Good, very good. It's very meaningful. Yes. Yep. Let me see. Okay, we don't have any more questions. So that's about it. So if you have any more questions that come up uh, after the whole Facebook session, it's okay. You can always WhatsApp to us at 8714-3321, as you've seen on the screen. 8714-3321. Send us WhatsApp. Okay. Back to so, you, Weber. Um, before we end today's session, I'd just like to share with you that next week on our midweek chatter with Wonder Girls, which happens on Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. on Facebook Live, we'll have our friend from Italy who will be coming down, I mean, to come, come coming down. online. <laughs> coming I hope he can come. <laughs> He'll be coming online to share about me and Cheryl's favourite European country, Italy. <laughs>
And next Friday, Cheryl and I will be sharing about our own experience when we cycled in Kota Tinggi and in Malacca during January this year. Okay, and that's it for us uh, tonight. Thank you and good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.